the beginning. Xmerk started as a project uh, with huge amount of assets well, more than three years ago. Uh, we started on Unity 3, then we've uh, migrated to Unity 4. Uh, it was a big challenge for us to, it's for you to understand, right now we have 200 different assets, uh, different scenes with whole, whole, whole different uh, landscapes, different structures, diff different levels, and it's all um, became the landscape for our 400 different missions that we are uh, developed for our game. There are also tons of different assets, uh, different characters, different NPCs, so different uh, huge amount of different stuff. And all that was migrated from Unity 3 to Unity 4. Um, after that, it of course migrated to Unity 5, and I'll tell you uh, what was going on from early beginning. So in uh, 2014, we migrated to Unity 4 as first one of the first beta testers. So we've started to use all the beta versions and all different, different, different uh, builds. But the real progress started from probably Unity 4.6 when we were um, using U UGUI, UGUI, and we won were one of also thousands or hundreds of testers finding these fancy little bugs on the UI and the fancy little bugs on the whole Unity. Every beta was a pain. We were starting to migrate. Uh, everything was wrong. So every new beta broke different things. Then we fixed these things. Then with next beta, everything goes wrong again. So it was continuous progress of migration. And afterwards, finally, we make it to run on Unity 4.6. And it was amazing, because finally we got first working build on Unity 4 after uh, build working on Unity 3. Then the other challenge arrives. Many of you know, how many of you know about 64-bit problem on iOS? Yay. So m maybe someone avoided that. But um, in a reasonable time frame, Apple decided that they would support only 64 bits for their applications, their games. And um, Unity 4 wasn't ready for that. So um, we, as many others, used, uh, used to look into compiling uh, in internal language to C++, uh, C++, and we were trying to make it work for our huge game. So for you to understand, the um, uh, size of the build right now is about one gig. And we were trying to rewrite it and adopt it, and nothing works right. Uh, Fortunately, we were working with Unity a long time, and we have uh, enterprise support, and we were using their resources to help us. And for after one of last reviews on Unity 4.6, uh, 4 we found a few bugs. And in two days of that, they fixed all these bugs, and finally, we got a running build on uh, 64 bits. So the amount of time that we invested there was also unpredictable. So it's finally finally helped us to go and move forward for 64 bits on iOS. So we're still in the store. <laughs> we're still selling our game. Um, speaking about Unity 5, what we found useful, speaking about the, all these fancy features, all these fancy features of bright new shiny product of Unity 5, we see that the biggest value for us uh, have Mechanim, um, asset bundles. As I mentioned, we have a huge, huge size of the, our build, around 1 gig, and it's almost impossible to download it through the uh, Teller tele network. Uh, we were looking into light maps and uh, their improvements to make our game a bit better, and uh, we found a huge amount of bug fixes for the problems that were existing in previous versions. So it's very important too. Um, but. Speaking about new challenges that we're, and new technology that we were trying to adapt, we found a huge amount of issues. You know, when I come with it issues, uh, I'm trying to avoid all these uh, sharp corners about investing a huge amount of development time of our uh, teams. Uh, we were trying to compile, just recompile uh, our project on Unity 5. All the plugins that we were using before, the legacy plugins, uh, paid plugins that we purchased somewhere, our own plugins that we developed for Unity 4, they just won't work. 
So we rewrite our plugins. We were waiting for these uh, providers of the plugins that we are paying for, for when they adopt finally their plugins to work with Unity 5. Some of the plugins were just removed because it's almost impossible to rewrite them. They were all, all legacy. And our code became much more clean, fancy. And uh, now we use at least less, plug less amount of plugins. These plugins are uh, lighter and uh, more useful. And they, they all work with Unity 5. Uh, another challenge is shaders. Many of you know that shaders uh, have been in different sections here, and the majority of uh, guys, even from Unity, say, if you are going to do some uh, fancy running build, uh, you need to avoid default Unity shaders. Um, we are on the same story, too. We have all shaders that are developed by uh, ourselves. They are all custom, and they are all was rewritten for Unity 5. It was a huge amount of work, too, because we have, you've seen that we have a huge amount of assets there. Um, of course, UI. We face f uh, different challenges with the um, default input fields, because not, not everything works well. We have issues with transparency. Uh, we have issues with uh, phones. All these things were rewritten, even maybe twice, uh, during our migration to Unity 5. The light maps. Light maps is a different story. I have more slides on that. Um, all illumination works differently right now. So even if we were trying to rebake all our scenes with all the same uh, presets of lighting, um, the picture that we get is not so good. So we were supposed to rewrite it from scratch. Uh, other way, we were also trying to implement light probes because we were using it for, uh, we're, we've been using it for Unity 4.6, and we were we were trying to resolve some issues with the reflect, um, light reflection, and finally we decided almost to fully avoid using light probes. Right now, we found some um, some patches that were released in uh, 5.3.6, but we'll see how it would affect our performance and our our game. Um, Mechanim. So Xmercs is a game about mercenaries fighting uh, other mercenaries, uh, different uh, governmental structures, and aliens. It's a regular story in our world. So Mechanim, um, we helped us a lot to animate all our uh, NPCs and all our characters. Because we were using legacy animations for a long time, and if we speak about one Merc, one Merc is one character or one... Um, so this guy on the screen is a Merc. So uh, if we're speaking about his animations, to fix something or to rewrite something, it was a huge amount of time investment of uh, the um, animation team and our artist team. So uh, using Mechanim helped us to um, avoid that. So we started using events. Uh, we uh, started using substate machines. And this improves our experience working with animations up to three times in terms of uh, resource investment. So Mechanim help, helped here a lot. And by the way, there is some chance that in some unpredictable time frame, um, legacy animations could be uh, deprecated. So nobody speaks about that. but it's much better to be on the cutting edge of the technology than to then trying to port something from legacy to non-legacy, as we've done with different other stuff. So asset bundles. We also see big value to reducing our distribution up to uh, down to 100 megs. And uh, we even using our own resource system. So if you're using Unity resource system, you're usually do it like a wizard. So we implemented our own, and we started to collect the piece by piece different uh, assets to different bundles in this, uh, with bigger, um, bigger and more accurate granularity that decreases the amount of the bundles and helps us to manage this as, uh, these assets in the bundles uh, during the development process. This works well, too. Right now, this uh, is in process, and we're going to land it in our build 1.9.5. So um, I think our goal is reachable, and we are still on the, on the way to it. 
Let maps. Have you seen we have 200 scenes? And uh, we were trying to manually migrate them from Unity 4 to Unity 5. Uh, Enterprise support says that there's some same automatic utility to help us to do so, and we were even trying to use it, and the result and the amount of time investment into porting these uh, things through this automatic, same automatic utility was a bit less than to uh, rewrite all lighting from scratch. So after we realized the possibility that uh, Unity 5 provides us in terms of lighting, we found that it's much easier to fully rewrite and rebake all these scenes in terms of lights uh, to get the better result. So our scenes was um, not so cool as they are now, and they were a bit uh, know, darker, but not so fancy. So if you see, you could. It's not the good picture here because probably it's better to see it on LCD screen, but you could see that there's some differences in terms of uh, these two pictures. Left one is from Unity 4, right one is Unity 5. Uh, the crisp and colors are a bit different, so light reflections are better, and the uh, picture on Unity 5 looks more natural. And this is just uh, the result of playing with some lights. Nothing magical. Another thing, here you see the same, the same scene from Unity 4 to Unity 5. Different illumination, uh, different lights. It looks more real, a bit more real, if we could say so, speaking about the th 3D animated game. The last picture. The amount of details is better. They are more sharp. So that's the result of um, long, long, long work of our team of artists who were rebaking all the lights for a um, whole 200 scenes. And we realized that this is huge, and this uh, is really important, because if we if we were trying to avoid this and not to play with light maps in Unity 5, uh, we will get, um, let's say, it lower quality, because we were trying to uh, reduce the amount of resources we invest in, into this porting to Unity 5, but the result that we get is much worth it. Metal. Uh, finally, uh, on Unity 5.4 beta, we, we enabled Metal on iOS devices. At first, we received huge not huge, but the big uh, FPS drop down on uh, high load scenes. Um, it was a strange behavior because we were supposed to use metal as a floating, uh, a floating system for our game. But after some investigation um, through Xcode GPU from Raid Capture and uh, Frame Debugger, we found these bottlenecks, avoid them, and uh, now everything works fine. We see the performance boost from using metal, and we even uh, increased the amount of F FPS on scenes that not use metal just everywhere. Um, this is really, really important story because not always using metal helps because you need need to think about how you're doing your regular scene creation and uh, how do you generate your frames in. After working with Unity on that, and after a couple of reviews, we found that we could do it a bit more efficient. About Unity code review, uh, as part of program of Unity Enterprise support, we uh, we have possibility to invite engineer to review, review our code, and our last code review helped us to improve um, lots of different aspects of our game. So of course we improved the frame rate. It's always the first first and initial goal to all of these reviews. Uh, afterwards, we uh, increased FPS on UI, because UI uh, always need to be crisp and clear. It was, should be bright and shiny, so user wouldn't, <laughs> uh, wouldn't expect any lags, uh, even on the game uh, interfaces. And we improved uh, loading time, so we dec uh, decreased it up to 20%. It's not a huge amount, but we're speaking about up to five or six seconds. The huge game, um, big amount of assets, and uh, five seconds matter. When, the, when your player is looking on the screen and trying to 
trying to load the game. Um, maybe he even have five minutes for the session. And if you're wasting too much time on loading, you're just stealing his time of playing. So that's how it works, and that's where Unity helps us a lot too. So what would be next? Um, in July time frame, we are going to migrate to Unity 5.4, finally. Uh, and we're going to launch all these new bright and shiny features into the store. So if you want, you could try it in July time frame and see uh, the results of our long, continuous work. Probably that's all.